Okay, welcome back everyone. It is uh, 518 of 2015. We're going to finish up uh, the doctrine of creation per Ricoeur. We're gonna, actually going to take care of uh, Paul Ricoeur's final lesson, and he actually gives us his consolidated view, uh, which will uh, include everything that he has mentioned up until this point. But it gives us a very comprehensive final view of the doctrine of creation. And what you're going to love about this is that he actually, uh, here's your hermeneutic um, philosopher. He goes to uh, the Bible. He goes to the New Testament. He's discussing the Hebrew Bible, of course, we know. But he's going to go to the New Testament. He's going to go to the uh, book of Colossians, and he's going to take a look at what Paul has to say about creation in Colossians. And Ricoeur is going to base his doctrine of creation on Colossians 1, 15 through 18. So he's going to take everything that uh, Lecoq and he have uh, dialogued about thus far, and then he's going to integrate that with Colossians 1, 15 through 18, and he's going to come up with a finalized doctrine of creation, which is going to uh, consist of three Greek terms from uh, Colossians, of kephale, synestemi, and proteus, or proteus. And so we're going to take a look at these three moments, and uh, I think we're really going to be able to appreciate what Ricoeur has done here. We have a great, tremendous hermeneutical professor who um, gives us a biblical doctrine of creation from the uh, Paul's epistle to the Colossians. Uh, beautiful doctrine here. I just love this. First moment is going to be creation event. Second moment, creation narrative. Remember, he mentioned this earlier. That's why I say he's consistent with this earlier hermeneutical presentation. And the third moment of creation existence. Creation event addresses the cosmological modality of creation. It addresses the creator as the kafali master. The creative logos has two aspects. That of a beginning as a prototokos, which is the first born in a genitive sense. It means the beginning of the sequence of events that uh, inaugurate uh, creation. Also includes the aspect of origin as kafale, and that equals the directional sense of the divine wisdom that is uh, incarnated in that uh, beginning. It's, it stands for um, a unifying wisdom. It's the kafale of wisdom as an existing sunistemi unifying force that is always tensioned against a persistence of a uh, chaos ethical evil. So there's always that uh, tension of uh, suppressing uh, chaos. It is considered a mastery. The kafali of wisdom is abbreviated under the category of mastery for Ricoeur. Goodness becomes understood as a proximation. It's the goodness as proximate, therefore the divine goodness it's a proximate presence of the creator kafale wisdom. The second moment is narrative, which, uh, of course, is that overlap that's uh, layered on top of event, which uh, Ricoeur mentioned earlier. But now we're going to look at it within Colossians. Narrative is an expression of uh, the confidence toward God's faithfulness toward creation. It's oath-based confidence uh, toward the divine oath after the flood where God said that the creation will never be unmade again. Because basically the flood was the unmaking of creation. It was returned to primordial waters. But uh, the divine oath was that the creation will never be unmade again. Narrative is an expression of liturgical unity for Rakur, uh, abbreviated under the concept of Sabbath which becomes the organizational pole of this uh, liturgical unity. And liturgy becomes uh, the linguistic opposition to that persistence of the evil kekas. And narrative is an expression of the Jewish mitzvah of ethical imperative. We are discussing the uh, Hebrew Bible here. Mitzvah equals the divine narrative word that mediates between the fragility of creation and the divine faithfulness. So that mediating moment is the moment of a mitzvah of uh, ethical participation in response to the ethical imperative. 
So in other words, uh, we participate in the divine faithfulness. We participate in the directional sense. And uh, it's always a proximate goodness. It's always hidden, but always spiritually proximate and present. Our reality is not the true reality. There is a spiritual reality within finite reality that we recognize uh, as Christians. Objectively, uh, this uh, sunastami goodness of uh, faithfulness is the lexical narrative of faithfulness. Subjectively, it's the uh, confidence coupled with a phronesis of mitzvah, which uh, thereby, thereby constitutes our motivational base of attestation. Remember, Rakur mentioned that earlier, the motivational base of attestation, which subjectively is the uh, ethical force in uh, the sustained creation. Therefore, liturgy supplies a proleptic, persuasive power to help transform our historical reality. So objectively, we have in our current historical reality the lexical narrative of faithfulness that is present for us in history. But subjectively, in our current historical situation, we have the confidence, uh, the the intersubjective confidence, coupled with uh, the phronesis of a mitzvah of uh, the ethical participation uh, in response to ethical imperative. And that does give us that motivational base of attestation, which uh, Ricoeur mentioned earlier. So liturgy is truly a power. It truly is a persuasive power. Uh, it uh, very much centers on the uh, linguistic emphasis of uh, Ricoeur. So language in itself has a persuasive power to create. So after the second moment of narrative, we learned earlier that uh, Ricoeur combines event and narrative to reach existence. Now creation as existence is going to be uh, the political modality and it's going to be the creator as the Proteus, Proteus judge. And this means a distinguishing and a selecting. The uh, moment is a concretion or concrete expression of divine faithfulness. The krinos is a judgment consisting of distinguishing and selecting, and the pro proteus is the uh, being of a first divine quality. So it's a divine qualitative distinguishing and selecting of that which will be actualized in reality, historical reality. It will include the moment of the reflexive mastery because uh, it will conclude with the reflexive moment of returning to the open concept of mastery which means refining our understanding of God's kafali wisdom as an ever ongoing process. The concept is never finalized. It's always open for revision. We always learn and gain greater spiritual depth of understanding concerning uh, the divine kafali wisdom. And then ultimately we end up with the Dikayasune righteousness. All three modalities are enclosed within an inclusive Paul type theology of the justice of God, which is Dikayasune, a totalizing justice. So at, uh, we reach a finalized doctrine of creation for Paul Ricoeur, and it is uh, essentially Paul of Colossians. It's the Paul of the epistle to Colossians. And so it's a fantastic lesson and a, a great benefit to us to get this uh, final uh, conclusive uh, synopsis from Ricoeur. And I just love the fact that he totally immersed into Scripture and took up Colossians 1, 15 through 18. So that will wrap up our look at the final lesson on uh, Paul Ricoeur on the Doctrine of Christ.